in your living room. The lights are off. The muted blue glare of the TV reminds you of just how helpless you really are. Thunder shrieks. The wind howls. The attic creaks. A knock at the door surprises you. Hey! We didn't order any pizza, Batty Boy! Swear to me! You stand up as the door crashes open and the murder's murder crew enters your home. Oh, yeah! They yell jokes, pop culture references, and start mansplaining some of the most vile true crimes you've ever heard of. You listen to them, unsure at first, but you relax and do it. Pretty soon you're laughing, horrified, and strangely turned on. At some point they've realized they forgot to introduce themselves. So please make room in your heart for Grant, Jamie, Austin, Carlton, Joseph, and the friends, lovers, and or acquaintances they pressure into hanging out. Like that creepy billionaire that lives down the street who keeps luring children into his bat cave. I mean, cave, cave. Batman, is it really necessary that I change in front of you? Yes, it's the most important part. Tell me, Batman. Has the boy Wanda started shaving yet? Holy booty shorts, Batman! Make room for murder murder. So, today we are discussing a man called H.H. H. Holmes. Most famous Ooh, for... I love yeah. this guy. Yeah. yeah, most famous for having the Myrtle Castle in, um, in Chicago. Chicago, baby! Chateau. And yeah. I have to be honest, I personally hate this man with a fiery passion. I'm pretty sure his ghost fucked me up because we were supposed to do the podcast like, well, I think like last week or something like that. Schedules changed and I had written the entire script. I was just mm-hmm. like, oh, perfect. I don't know what happened to the script. Hmm. It's not in my trash bin. It's like it never happened. Really? So I had to rewrite this entire <laughs> fucking script. <laughs> so I'm like, did this guy just haunt my computer? My Wi-Fi ate my homework. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, before going deep into this, I want to clarify that in the multiple documentaries, Wikipedia, and generally any files I can find, there's conflicting and exaggerated information that was and is misconstrued to sensationalize his story. This is not only true in the contemporary sense, but also in the time that this happened. Um, There's a lot of... uh, like newspapers and stuff like that at the time, like looking back where people... Can historians can now look at it and be like, that was not true. That was definitely very much sensationalized. Um, yeah, they're just trying to sell papers. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of conflicting evidence for certain things, and I'll you know bring it up as it comes. But I do want to clarify that this happens in the late 1800s. So, you know. Uh, no cell phones. Yeah, forensic evidence was not very much a thing yet. Oh, that too. Yeah. Um, and then on <laughs> and then, and then on top of that, like cell phones. That's what you got. From that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just that was the first. Thing yeah, I Wi-Fi was, like, was nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> can't get a goddamn signal. <laughs> um, but as you can imagine, it's also very easy to forge anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So identities were made, stolen, changed, yeah. stolen often, and so it wouldn't be unheard of for some of these lies to be truth and some of the truth to be actual lies. Sure. Nonetheless, let's start. Okay, the infamous H.H. Holmes was born with the name Herman Webster Mudgett on May 16, 1861. It's always the Hermes, though. (laughs) Have you noticed, like, like if it's like a notorious murderer, it's usually Herman or like an H name. I was kind of stuck on Mudgett. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it just sounds like he just crawled out of a bog. <laughs> his, hey, I'm Mudgett. Say his name one more time. Um, Herman Webster Mudgett. Okay, so if you saw that name on a label, how much would you pay for a sperm? Negative. You yeah. have to pay yeah. Call a call back. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah. I don't need any of that. I think it would really depend on, uh, on the times. You know, like, if we were in, like, a really weird uh, time where, like, Maybe it was like uh, if it was the like, 1950s, I would probably pay top American dollar when it was worth something for. No, I'm talking about like some like end of the world apocalypse shit. Like I need, I need this. What, I need, what, I need what a crazy a, guy on my side. What would a nearsighted stamp collector do for you during <laughs> the apocalypse? Because if I hear Herman Webster Mudgett, <laughs> that's all I'm thinking of. So, well, I'm talking <laughs> like I said, I just need a psychopath on, on my side. You know, stamp collector. That's really good. Um, like but. That. 
in uh, blah, 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 going back to a lot of um, evidence and a lot of things like not really sure. Um, some evidence says that he was born in 1860, and some says 1861. So again, it's, that one's not a big deal, but just to give you an idea of, there's a whole bunch of shit here that has conflicted. Yeah, there's not even like good like birth certificates. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then this carries on. So in some accounts, it says that uh, he uh, was. Some accounts say he showed signs of psychopathic behaviors and was killing small animals while in an impoverished family that led him to be even more conniving so that he could get out. But some accounts say he actually had a wealthy family, had a healthy upbringing, and through the years acquired his taste of murder and swindling. Sounds That also sounds right. Um, (laughs) The only real thing that we know for sure is that he came from a family of farmers. And it seems as though, personally, I'm in the camp that his family was well off as farmers, but they weren't wealthy. But it did like seem as though uh, he wanted more. Um, he <coughs> did have uh, a very religious upbringing. His father was a um, uh, very sh- strict Methodist. And I'm sure that came across with uh, some abuse and some trauma. Uh, you know, it's the 18... What, at this time, it's like the 1850s. Yeah. So I... Would imagine you'd get beat with a stick pretty often. And yeah. That yeah. was kind of normal. Like, probably to an inch of your life. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, how would you know that your parents loved you? Right. Right. If they didn't beat the shit out of you. Exactly. Now, again, to the s- <laughs> sensationalized part. more than hurt the kids. <laughs> <laughs> to the sensationalized part, this is one account that I read talking like about that. Mudget. Mudget was born into a wealthy family and showed signs of high intelligence from an early age. Always interested in medicine, he allegedly trapped animals and performed surgery on them. Some accounts of his life even suggest that he killed a childhood playmate. Normal for the 1800s. But again, that is said, but there is no evidence linking any of that to him. But there also probably wouldn't be a whole hell of a lot of evidence back then because kids just went missing. They might be like, yeah, Coyote got her well, or Herman the, killed her. The other thing, too, is yeah, like really if you accidentally though. kill your, your, your playmate in the 1800s, it's like, ah, it's just boys being boys. <laughs> 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 Oops. <laughs> we lose like two out of ten kids to a horse play. Well, maybe like you shouldn't year. have been playing so close to the quarry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but there, there is one account that is factual. So apparently, like, uh, he got picked on a whole bunch uh, and was, like, the weird kid in class. Herman Webster got picked on? No. <laughs> Mud, Mudflap is his last name? Apparently. Mudflap. <laughs> <I'm Herman Mudflap. laughs> they drag him to, like, the science room and then make him face one of the skeletons and uh, hold the skeleton to his face and make the uh, skeleton's hands, like hold him and he said that lo- I would love to be in an 1800 science room. seriously in a civil <laughs> right. war era science right. room I right. would not the yellow one is the sun <laughs> oh you're talking about how easy it would be oh my god <laughs> right if you punch a balloon it goes forward <laughs> great <And> experiment it- <laughs> so uh, apparently it, some accounts say that he was very intelligent in high school. Uh, not really anything that can back that up. But apparently he did graduate high school at the age of 16 and wants to get the hell out of town. He sure. wants to get the hell out of Dodge. And sure. he um, falls for uh, one of the wealthiest uh, women um, in the town to help him get out of there. And he decides that he wants to become a doctor. Um, and that's his game plan. Like, I'm going to get out of this town. I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to become rich. Screw all these people. Where was this town? I forgot. This was in, I think, New Hampshire. Okay. Hmm. Man. Yeah. Yeah, New Hampshire. Mid, mid what, 19th century New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. Gotta suck. I'm still stuck on the science class. Do they even know about, like, (laughs) like microorganisms at that time? Uh, I think that they had they, just gotten around to the microscope. I think, right? Yeah, point. I mean, yeah. they were still like measuring they, they were, people's skulls to see how smart they were. I yeah. mean, it wasn't like chronology. They, they, they knew some. They stuff. just learned about germs. 
Right. Yeah, I mean, they. Yeah. Had, I think they had like a very, very rudimentary like cowpox vaccine, right. you know. But they were they were figuring stuff out, yeah. but they weren't like stupid, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I'm, I'm, I'm sure magic was still an answer. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you imagine science class though, like this is a boy. This is a girl. There's a pop quiz tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks. Which one's got the penis? <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's around this time that, like, there was a person, I forget the, the person's name, but they weren't a doctor. But they had figured out that, like, a whole bunch of women were um, dying and so were the babies when giving birth. Mm. And the person figured out if you wash your hands, like, that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But right. the doctors of the town were like, we're doctors. We don't need you to tell us how to do our job. Yeah. And Isn't still we're letting funny people thing die. About the human experience, because a very similar story happens when they found out that the earth was round and the church was like, no, it's flat. <laughs> Fuck you. And then they killed the guy that was like, oh, I think it might be round. <laughs> Well, they didn't mm-hmm. kill him. They just no. They just imprisoned <laughs> they wanted him to. in his home where he died, like blind and alone. Yeah, in his like frail final years. I mean, they didn't help him out. Right. You know? <laughs> it's Galileo. 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 Okay, so, and by the age of seventeen, he marries the girl, and. Um, well, what else are you going to do? You got to <laughs> lock that down. Convinces yeah. her to help him pay his way through college and medical school. On July 4th, 1878, he married Clara Lovering. By age 18, he goes off to college at the University of Vermont in Burlington. He goes there for about a year, presumably to drop out, and then moves to another town and moves to the University of Michigan's Department of Medicine and Surgery. And this is where he starts to learn the uh, tricks and trade of his future endeavors. Ah, yeah. That's, Murder. Yeah. It, so if I cut the body right here. Oh, dude. It, I wish it was just as simple as like he learned how to kill people, but it, it's way worse. No, there's like embalming. And, uh, <laughs> so to give point of reference. Yeah. Uh, training. Yeah, training. The med- school, medical schools <laughs> at this time taught their students by class dissections. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they even set the students up to dissect their own bodies, study skeletons and all the like. As you can imagine, for the hundreds of students in each school, they needed bodies and lots of them. And it was very hard to legally acquire these bodies. Yep. So most of these schools had an underground trading system to be able to get enough bodies. Apparently, this was such a big problem. If they would have done it the legal way, they would have only gotten 20% of the bodies they would have needed for the amount of students they had. Mm. Now that's like a that's a conundrum there, because like on one hand it's like yeah like we should probably learn, uh, we should learn by practice. But on the other hand, like where's the uh, sort of principle and the morality? Right. You know. I mean, personally, I wouldn't care, but I'm pretty sure there'd be a lot of people upset if they found out that they buried an empty casket. You know what I mean? Maybe exactly. a little miffed about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I have like one like couple weird things. Like can you imagine that conversation like realizing you need dead bodies like you're just around your your profession like we need more dead bodies and everybody just start looking at each other. <laughs> 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 Secondly, what was the black market called back then? Cuz I, I don't think they had a name for it. And thirdly, I do think it would be a funny skit. Like, can you imagine teaching H, uh, well, I, I know him as H.H. H. Holmes. Yeah. But, like, him, him asking, like, weird questions and you as a professor realizing, that guy's... Yeah, let's keep an eye on him. <laughs> so, so if I cut into the cadaver like this while it was alive, would it scream? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Yes. yes, it would scream. Uh, Interesting. How do also, I make it not scream? So how fucked up would you have to be to raise red flags in that situation? Like, there's a room full of stolen dead of bodies. ghoulish yeah. doctors yeah. like buying illicit like, bodies. This one stands out as the worst. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so even if he did like say a whole bunch of weird red flags, there are bigger red flags yeah. at the time. Yeah. So apparently the janitor of the school was like the ringmaster for getting these bodies. Of course. Yeah. That scans. And of course, Mudget befriends the the janitor and starts getting in on selling these bodies to the school. And he basically learns the tricks on the trade of like where to get bodies. Um which pretty much came down to they would wait uh, until someone died, got you know buried, and it'd be a fresh body, and they would just grave rob. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then sell it back to the school. Sounds like Frankenstein. 
It does. I think Frankenstein was probably inspired by a lot of this. I think it was also fairly common practice or mm, common yeah, knowledge yeah. that medical people would yeah, it was. try to steal your family's dis- r- remains. I think doctors were like very feared around yeah. this time period. I think that's maybe that's where the mad scientist trope comes from. Mm. Probably. You know, people used to be fucking terrified of him. Mm-hmm. So prior to this, he was a broke college student scraping by basically um, – because who point. hasn't been there? <laughs> Pontiac <laughs> full of dead bodies, just trying to get that Papa John's run so you can turn in your shitty hat and go home for I was the night. Say, I mean, I'm still broke. Uh, well, I can subscribe. This guy, <laughs> he finds out there's easy money, just easy for the picking, and he goes to town. He just, just starts grave six robbing. Feet under. Yeah. Um, Sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> There's bodies in them hills. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a. He befriends a, another a classmate, which is an awesome name. R.C. Laycock. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell nice. Yeah. Nice. It's spelled L E A C O C K, but it's pronounced. We all Laycock. know. We all know <laughs> how it's pronounced. He also invented R.C. Cola. Mm-hmm. It's better. He had to change the name from RC uh, Cockwater. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> He's like, you know what? RC Soda sounds better. <laughs> so him uh, and Laycock, they basically, uh, you know, it, when you're in science class and they're making you like pair up in teams and mm-hmm. dissect and whatever, that was his best bud. In mm-hmm. fact, in a, one of the yearbooks, which I think is kind of weird, that there's yearbooks. At college, yeah, yeah. Or medical school, yeah, that yeah, is a little, weird. a little weird. But he signed him, and he's like, "You're my best friend." Aw, oh, yeah, it's kind of sweet. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of cute. Did they have like caught. a psychopath section? And, but they should have because they books? fucking together. They team up and just start grave robbing together, and they eventually just start graduating into doing more and more scams together. In the name of science, <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping the school. Thank you, <laughs> if not the world. So they start coming up with scams, and the first scam they start piecing together is putting up life insurance policies on people. So the game plan would be like, like let's say uh, I found a body. I know Joseph. This body kind of looks like Joseph. And so we would fake Joseph's death, or we would put a life insurance policy for like $20,000, and then I would let Joseph in on it. We'd fake his death. Plant the body. Easy 10K between us. Yeah. And then we do. 10- and then I just get a new name. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. Tommy Hilfiger now. <laughs> and, or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and then on top of no, that. You, you jumped on Tommy Hilfiger pretty quick. You yeah. didn't have that. I, yeah. I don't know why. That was like right at the forefront of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine like finding out that Tommy Hilfiger's whole empire was, was found on dead him. bodies? <laughs> it's like an insurance scam. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jamie, um, I got this idea for a T-shirt. Did you find in your research, like, once they change their name, they're definitely relocating, right? At this point, they're not. Because I'm, I'm saying the person that's changing their name, because it's like, all right, that's Jamie. Then tomorrow, you're like, no, I'm Charles. Like, <laughs> yeah. you can't walk into your usual you're, bar. You're <laughs> fucking Jamie, dude. And they didn't really explain that part. Because Cause as we said, science. Like, at this point in time, it just seems as though, like, insurance was easy and everyone was okay with it. Is this why they don't pay out on shit anymore? Because <laughs> they got burned got too screwed. many times. <laughs> My grandfather told me a story once. <laughs> um, but essentially, so not only would they pull off the insurance scam, but then after like the body is buried, they would grave rob the yeah, body. Double down. And then yeah, just sell it back to the school. It's kind of <laughs> genius. <laughs> I've seen this guy before. <laughs> Evil genius. I know that cock. <laughs> I didn't know that cock. <laughs> but as you can imagine, they're <laughs> they get too caught up in scamming and it's starting to affect uh specifically um Mudget's uh studies. He apparently was known as nothing above mediocre in the school and graduated nearly bottom of his class. In but fact, he graduated. <laughs> he graduated, but in fact, the faculty had to take a second vote on whether he should even <laughs> get his medical degree. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Wait, they voted on Apparently they voted. Huh. <laughs> How much Interesting. Like what what was the uh Yeah, like is it does it have to be like any majority is fine or do you have to have like a super majority or I like, have no clue how that works. I imagine back then like they didn't have a lot of textbooks. So it was hard <laughs> to like actually test people on things like that. I guess so. 
Yeah, so just the professors all signed off. I was like, yeah, he's good enough to Yeah, go or practice. probably be like, yeah, I was talking to that one kid, and he sounds like a real fucking idiot still. Let's not graduate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, we all don't like it, but we'll let him go. Because <laughs> if not, he'll be back next year. I think they only let him slide because he was helping them with, the like, finding and selling bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he knew too much. Yeah. yeah. So they you're not, like, not going to fail me if I'm helping you get rid of bodies. So yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a, yep. That's good. Like, I'm sure there was a professor who's just like, I'm not having him after me. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking get He has a 1.7. <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crap surgeon, but, you know, he knows how to find humans for us. <laughs> so, uh, 1884, he finally gets his medical license. Um, but kind of like, blows up his life at the same time. So in 1884, as he's uh, graduating, uh, housemates described Holmes as treating Clara, his wife, violently in 1884 before his graduation. Uh, so much so, she moved back to New Hampshire and later wrote she knew little of him afterwards. For the record, she is super lucky that he was actually like super violent at this time because she is one of the few women in his life that he, he doesn't murder. Mm. In yeah. fact, all it takes is one, really. <laughs> in fact, it's funny okay. because she knew so little about him <laughs> that, like, when he becomes H.H. Holmes, like, she had no clue that any of this was going down. Probably better for her. They stayed married, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he uh, technically married. Legally. So he, yeah. legally speaking, they, yeah. they stayed married, and he eventually tries to divorce her and then saying, like, that it was for her infidelity, and they couldn't prove anything in court, so it just never stuck. Mm. But he kept getting married, like, afterwards. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that got him in a whole lot of shit more and more often. <laughs> but after he graduates, he's like, uh, screw this town. And he moves to Moore's Fork, New York. Or Moore's Forks. Moore's Forks, Moors? New York. Moore's. like M-O-O-R-S? M-O-O-E-R-S. Moore's yeah. Forks. I would say Moore's, yeah. Yeah. And... Two things seem to happen simultaneously. One, he starts to see a new woman, gets engaged to her. Then it gets out that he's already married and never got a divorce. And around the same time, a rumor spread that Holmes had been seen with a little boy who later disappeared. And so we begin. Yeah, so we begin. Holmes claimed, this is the most incriminate, incriminating thing I could ever think of. He claimed the boy went back home to Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> How old was the kid? I, about eight at the yeah. time. Yeah, he just packed his bags and he left. Yeah, he left. I said, all right, I'm not going to stop you. I was like, man, that sounds tough. Yeah, you should go see your family. So I gave him $5 <laughs> and he went about his way. $5 is probably a lot of money. It's a lot time. of money, yeah. Especially for an eight-year-old. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no uh, no investigation took place. You spit it all, <laughs> <Go balls. laughs> and uh, he quickly left town because you know his, he, he he can't be around after an eight year old disappears. He can't just hang out. Well, I mean, there was also uh, he was shamed because he tried to marry a woman while also still being married, and that's what they got caught up on. Well, I mean, it was both those things. And oh, okay, so, yeah, and so fifty fifty. So. I was going to say divorce was probably very, very, very hard in these times because it was so, like, frowned upon. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, especially if it's, I mean, growing up Catholic, like, that is, like, like you have to go through the church and they even have to, like, you know, decide whether or not you can get right. divorced or not. Right, right, right. Uh, I think it's, I mean, I think it's definitely changed since. But, yeah, not on on top of... On top of it being just completely morally wrong at the time, it was just you had to go through probably so many loops. Like you, I think you would have to really prove that your spouse was a crazy, crazy person, crazy defined in that time. In that time. In that time. (laughs) So because beating your wife is like (laughs) that's ah, super normal. Yeah, you can work through it. Um, so was he, that it? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. Boo boo. He moves to Minneapolis at the time. Um, and I should also mention around this time going forward, he journals most of his life. And those accounts act as incredible insight on his life, his thought patterns, and comparing what we know, um, and how much of a habitual liar he was. Um, to my understanding, it's actually published, so you can actually oh, okay. read it. And while doing all this research, there's a lot of people, historians, fans or whatever, mm-hmm. other true crime documentaries, 
that pretty much seem to hold this in high regard. And it's obviously like this man has deep psychological issues and it shouldn't be seen as like an untouchable work of art. It mm -hmm. should be seen as just a madman writing down his thoughts. Well, at the same time, I would say it's probably the, probably one of the first insights that we probably have ever had to somebody, especially if you're if 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 you are somebody who studies these kinds of people mm -hmm. like that's probably the one of the earlier accounts of of a psychopath writing all their thoughts down. And it's like yeah. probably a, a better way to, to study how other psychopaths think. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he pisses off the town again and moves over to Philly. Like his time in, uh, was it Minneapolis? Minneapolis? Did he disappear was, another little boy? It was just, he, he <laughs> disappears other people and that comes up. But like he mm -hmm. wasn't in Minneapolis long. That's not really like discussed. It just assumed like, he probably did something he mm -hmm. wasn't supposed to and skipped town again. But yeah, circling like, back around to the little boy, where did this child come from? Was it just like a like a yeah, street like a rat? town kid? Or yeah, like, just like a little town rat or I imagine so. Most of the time, when he goes to a new town, he uh, as a doctor works at pharmacies mm -hmm. and drugstores, mm -hmm. and so apparently the little boy was just seen with him at the pharmacy. Oh, okay, so they weren't, he wasn't like a sidekick for a while. And then he just, <laughs> got it. The murder boy wonder. <laughs> Fetch my forceps, boy murder. <laughs> you got it, AJ. <laughs> stab it, stab it, stab. So he moves to Philly. Can I stab him? <laughs> and like I said, works at a drugstore and. The fucking first thing he does. While at the drugstore, another young boy mysteriously dies after taking some medicine that he got from the drugstore. Boom. The whole town is, like, they figure it out immediately. And they're, like, trying to put him on trial. And he skips town again. <laughs> um, while doing this, there's a lot, like, he, he always seems very busy. Because a lot of the things I'm talking about start overlapping at the same time. Where it sounds like... For most people, like, I'm really stressed. I can't handle all this. This guy is like, I'll murder someone here, skip town here, commit this insurance fraud here, and then just keep it pushing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at one point in 1885, and to clarify, he's still best friends with his buddy Le Laycock. But he starts running out of money because mm -hmm. he just keeps skipping town and can't hold down a job. He calls up his old boy Laycock. And he calls up his old boy Laycock, and the plan is that they're going to pull off the biggest heist yet. They're going to put a full-on life insurance plan on a family of three. Mm. And then, like, they came up with this huge thing of, like, the, I think it was, like, the wife is going to die, the husband's going to be so upset, he kills himself and then kills the kid. Mm. And so they came up with, like, this huge elaborate plan to be able to, like, put three life insurance plans all at once and then be able to sell the bodies and yada, yada, yada. Nothing goes to plan. Mm -hmm. They can't find the bodies and they're like, Ugh, fuck it, whatever. Wait, they killed them but they couldn't find the bodies? No, like they couldn't find bodies that could fit the description oh, of the, three, I of the uh, family members. I got so like he gets so frustrated. He's like, <laughs> Is it me I got it. it. I'm I'm overcomplicated this whole plan. So his new plan is he's going to fake his own death. Mm. And he thinks this is going to be so simple because he can just make the money go straight to him. He doesn't have to split it with anybody. And he, all, he, all he needs is just one body. Mm -hmm. So fun fact, I didn't know this, but I was looking into how they identified bodies at the time. Because, you know, nine times out of ten now we have fingerprints, mm -hmm. we have dental records. They didn't have either of those. So I was like, how did they identify bodies? Basically, all they knew was like your height and they would like measure your, um, your arm span, like the, the span mm -hmm, of your arms, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and measure your, your, your crate or your, your bra not brain, uh, your crane. skull. Oh, yeah. okay. Old cranium. Okay. Yeah. And that was, that was really about it. They were like, well, no, 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 it's close enough. Yeah, he's a size six hat. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's thinking, easy money, easy money. I'm about to walk away with some big money on this one. 
And he pulls like a Bugs Bunny, comes dressed up as his wife. He, uh, <laughs> no, my husband. So, yeah. What's up, Doc? Apparently, he's just trolling through the different school, the medical schools at the time, trying to find one of the bodies. And so he, his plan is to steal one of the bodies. And he's going through also a, um, um, local deaths like obituaries and trying to see if he can find anything. And nothing is popping up. So first couple of days, he's like, oh, it'll happen anytime soon. Days turn to weeks. Weeks turn to months. And he gets so frustrated, he loses his damn mind. So apparently, um, he gets so frustrated that he's yelling in the streets and goes to a cop and says he's going to kill himself. So the cops immediately put him in a psych ward. All right. Some things never change. Hey, babe, let me call you back. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be late for dinner again. Fuck. <laughs> so he goes to the psych ward. He's only there for two months. Like they clear him. They're like, oh, he's all, yeah, he's all right. He'll you okay? <laughs> yeah, I just had to cry it all out. You promise you won't? <laughs> He just, Pinky promise. Give Pinky me your promise gun. you're not going. Give me your gun. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. He just had the grumpies. <laughs> so I guess I don't know exactly what happened in this psych ward, but it really made him get his shit together. Like he oh. I gotta stop fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's basically the self-talk he probably had. Cause like he goes from like fucking up, broke, like can't do one fucking scam. He looks at the rest of the people in the psych ward. Like, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not that bad. Yeah, I can fucking do this. Yeah, right. seriously, what is the success rate for like a late 1800s psych ward? Like one in a million? And this is that one in a million time where it actually helps? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, like... Between all the electroshock and just drowning these people. That's you what, know, exactly. We <laughs> actually found a way to help somebody. Yeah. Go team. Sticking an ice pick up your nose and hitting it with a hammer. Yeah, it's kind of tink, tink, tink. Mm-hmm. Bad thoughts are gone. <laughs> yep. Okay. Isn't that wild, though? All thoughts are gone. Just, <laughs> yeah. There's some doc out there who is just like, you just need to find your life's passion. Now hold on to this battery for me. It's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah, bite on this. <laughs> <laughs> So he moves to Chicago, where he changes his name to Henry Howard Holmes, <laughs> otherwise known as H.H. H. Holmes. Bigger oh, gasp. gasp. <laughs> Better known as Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> I am the game, and I want to play. <laughs> it's time to play the game. So, uh, that's one. Of, sorry, that's one of my favorite intros of any wrestler of all time. Shout out to Hector, whatever the fucking middle name is, Holmes. Anyway. As I've I've mentioned before, most modern true crime media is incredibly sensationalized. Not only from the host, but the source material and even the interviewers themselves. And this is a uh, a quote from one of the documentaries that I saw. It's titled, The Chilling Story of America's First Serial Killer, H.H. Holmes, Our History. On the Our History YouTube channel, there's one interviewer that said this. The frightening thing about Holmes is that he wasn't mad. Sorry. The frightening thing about Holmes is that he wasn't mad to carry out the killings. He was very happy about it. <laughs> like there's several, like <laughs> several historians, like when, like in several interviews, <laughs> just like, Here I go he wasn't again. that crazy. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> well, they also did live through one of the bloodiest conflicts like of all time, the American Civil oh, War. Oh yeah. So after that, they were probably I'm sure they've just seen like, worse. Yeah, I just sucked a bullet out of this dude's eyeball just to like be able to like keep it from getting into his brain. This guy just killed a couple people. Sure, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he moves to Chicago. He calls up his buddy Laycock. Um, and Mr. at this Laycock, time, he, he starts back, working at a pharmacy, and he's holding it down. He's doing things like by the book. He does real well and uh, starts pulling out together scams, insurance fraud, and selling bodies to the local school, but is able to keep it low profile. Okay. Okay. He calls up Laycock, and he's like, hey, I want to pull off another insurance scam together. Uh, come meet me in Chicago. They meet up in a hotel. Where he fucking killed his buddy Laycock, iced his body, then dressed his body. 
in his own clothes. He killed his bestie? <laughs> and he wrote about it in his own diary. In the diary, he, uh, quote, after enticing Dr. Robert Laycock to Chicago, I killed him by giving him an overwhelming dose of laudanum. If you don't know what laudanum... Not what, a bad way to go out. Um, mm. It's really not. A, it's a pretty sweet way to go laudanum. out. Laudanum? Hardly know him. I hate you. But <laughs> laudanum is basically uh, opium. Mm-hmm. But just, like dissolved in alcohol. Yeah. It's so a tincture, it's, so it's just it's, like <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so he just was giving him booze, and like apparently they were having drinks, and in the drinks he would he mix in the laudanum, yeah, yeah, and then just like I'm sure he was just feeling good, and then he just, could have just had a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he uses Laycock to fulfill the full plan that he had before, uh, uh, before going insane and going to the insane asylum. So. Uh, like I said, he kills him, um, dresses him up in his own clothes, and puts his identity papers in his pocket, dumps the body. Nice. And has a life insurance plan for $20,000. They dig him up. Oh, wow. This guy died with his identity papers. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient. Wow. Case closed. <laughs> well, you probably did carry them around with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it yeah. was like, otherwise, if you just died while you were walking around, it's not like anyone's going to know who you are. I was going right. to say, yeah, this is probably before uh, licenses, right? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why they, uh, that's no why they, driver's licenses. You're not, you don't need a license. That's why for they a, would uh, mm. sew the name into the back of your shirt or whatever. Cause then you just be like, oh, yeah. shit, this dead guy's Austin. There you go. <laughs> I don't so, think there's a license for horse-drawn carriages, right? So this twenty thousand CDL. Oh, it is. Oh, cool. yeah. No, you gotta you gotta work for it. Uh, <laughs> this twenty thousand dollars to adjust for inflation now would be the equivalent of about six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Damn, it's pretty good. Wow. It's a pretty good day. Yeah, yeah, pretty good fucking day. And he just changed his name, so he's got a brand new name. Man, not worth I, I, killing your best friend though. Wow. I mean, to him, it was. I need at least seven hundred thousand dollars. This is all part of a, a greater scheme. But you're also looking at it from a. You got to look at it from a different mindset. This guy wasn't normal. True. Very. very yeah. True. His thoughts and our thoughts aren't the same. Yeah, he's like, well, we, you know, we did commit scams together. There's no honor and thievery, so he's just like, you know what? He should have seen it coming. Mm. It's on Laycock. He was going to do it to me. I was going to say that's probably is on Laycock. It's on Laycock. Oh, Laycock never hurt nobody. He just sold a few illicit dead bodies and had an awesome last name. Come on. <laughs> Fucking waste of a last name. I know. Hey, what man. if he snuffed out the Laycock family lineage right there? No more Laycock. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, uh, you couldn't see that your friend was a psychopath? Yeah. Mr. Laycock? You probably could have pulled that same scheme with someone else, and then you'd have your best buddy, and then you'd have money. It gets worse to what he did to his buddy. <gasps> so like, oh, <laughs> gasp. Okay, so uh, you know he murders his buddy, frames it as his own. Apparently, after the body is buried, he graves he grave robs Mr. Laycock. <laughs> he grave robs Laycock. <laughs> and I'm not done with you. La- <laughs> yeah. Bring your ass here <laughs> <laughs> and sells. Hey, buddy, long time no see. <laughs> sells the body to Laycock. the local school. <laughs> for two hundred dollars, like you just got half a million dollars easy, and you're like, it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> but can yeah, I? But can hard. I flip it? <laughs> <laughs> but also, you think probably the guy at the school was just like, I saw this dude yesterday. He's here all the time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Somebody has to remember something. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember Laycock came in from out of town. Like mm-hmm. he came to visit yeah. in Chicago, so no one ever saw him. And on top of that, apparently. <laughs> when grave robbing, not only would he sell the bodies, but he would also resell the, the coffins and caskets. That's just like funeral home. <laughs> what a bastard. Seriously. <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe this is a spoiler alert, but like, did he ever fiddle faddle with any of the bodies, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, no. Um, that's something. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> that's, trying, hey, that's pretty good. Are you trying to redeem Mr. HH? I'm just saying compared to whatever else we've talked about, at least he didn't like suck dead cock. You know? no, so we're not adding necrophilia to the list yet. Right. Not, yeah, yeah. There's nothing saying. I, yeah. At least he didn't write about it in his uh-huh. diary. I mean, you're telling me that like not once when he brought up his old buddy Laycock, he wasn't just like, boop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did get him naked. He had to dress right. him. Right. Yeah. He okay. probably just looked at it for a second, was like, am I gonna... 
Nah. nah. <laughs> okay. So this is that's where he draws the line. <laughs> yeah, right? like, he's like, I could, but I won't. Nah, yeah. I've already I've already done so much. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I don't have it in me to commit necrophilia. It's right not now. as good as the real thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> so this is I'm gonna add a little bit of conjecture here. So it is later proven that technically uh, Holmes never killed Laycock. In fact, the paperwork for Laycock says that he died in Ontario in 1889. But it was an insurance scam. But my theory is that he had all of Laycock's identity papers. And I think with the money that he decided, like, he decided, like, I can just sell these identity papers. Mm Mm-hmm. And just sold it to a guy trying to get out of town, and then that guy went to Ontario. He and is then that triple guy dipping on this, dude. Man. He is like God he just damn. keeps finding more Seriously. ways. So fuck, dude. It just makes you think how easy it was back then, too. dude. Like God, seriously. So many people like in doing the research are like, he's a mastermind. He's a genius. Like, no, dude. He's just fucking. <laughs> he's on easy street. Killing yeah. people back in the day was easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to clarify, not only did he kill his best friend, not only did he commit insurance fraud by killing his best friend, not only did he grave rob his best friend, not only did he sell the body of his best friend, not only did he sell the casket of his best friend, but he also sell or sold his best friend's identity to a random guy. They really do be your own homies. Dude, and the worst part is, like, Carlton's going to get into it, that's not even the worst thing he does. Yeah. It's not. It gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we haven't even gotten to the murder case. Yeah, we're yet. not like we're still like this is just the the beginnings of it. Yeah, my God, I feel like he got to hell and Satan was like, "Put her there, pal." <laughs> <laughs> Gotta well, say, welcome to hell, big fan. <laughs> right, you're giving me a run for my money, man. I tell you what. Anyway, go jump into the lake of boiling diarrhea for me, would you? Because <laughs> I still run this bitch. That's Satan. <laughs> <laughs> It would be weird, though, finding out, like, you know, they have a thing called generational wealth and all that. Mm-hmm. But, like, you thinking your great, 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 great grandfather was some wealthy guy. No, he was just a murderer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did this guy have kids? Oh, dude, he did. And what's terrible is in, like, one of the documentaries I looked up, they interviewed uh, his great great grandkids. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, like... It's a terrible interview because they have, like, the two sisters there, and they're just talking over each other the whole time. And you're like, dude, one at a time, just shut up. I mean, because at this point, they're just making up stuff, right? Because they weren't they weren't there. They weren't there, but one thing that they did say that, like, I can relate to is they were saying, like, it bothers them knowing that such a horrific person, like, that same bloodline is in their blood. And then they, like, wipe their tears with, like, their stacks of money. Because I don't think they're rich. Yeah, they, like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> they definitely did not look rich in the documentary. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they don't have. Well, at least there's some justice in all of this. But you could use that to get out of arguments. Like, do you know who my grandfather is? Do you know? do you? I, I got that in me. <laughs> I got that dog in me. I could snap at any moment. <laughs> So, it, point Want to have a drink? Apparently, he's also, like, at this point... <laughs> Want to have a drink? Uh, see? Now we're going to slip this plum or what? <laughs> uh, so, apparently, now, you know, he's wealthy, uh, he's handsome, uh, he's got a good name for himself, and... You didn't mention he was handsome. Apparently, he was very handsome, and he was a smooth talker. Uh, all these... All the crazy psychopaths are. Mm-hmm. Um, Shout out to my boy, Bundy. God damn. Anyway, with the, you know... You're currently in last place. <laughs> with all that money he made from killing off his best friend, <laughs> uh, he starts to build the murder castle. And I'm just going to go over uh, <laughs> the, the first best thing that I thought, and then I'm going to hand it over to you, Carlton. So he starts building the murder castle um, across the street from the... Uh, pharmacy he works at Mm -hmm. he ends up getting easy commute he starts getting he he gets the ownership of the uh pharmacy if i remember correctly wasn't it like the walgreens the owner of the (laughs) the owner (laughs) is this how walgreens (laughs) no i'd probably be more like cbs let's be honest Uh, so like the the owner like mysterious cancer and then the woman mysteriously moved to california 
and moved gave, to California. Yeah. <laughs> she mysteriously moved away, never to be heard of again, and then he gets ownership. That sounds legit. Um, so now he's got a legitimate business. Uh, he's got stupid cash, starts building this, uh, <laughs> uh, the murder castle. And he's buying up tons of furniture, steel, bricks, yada, yada, yada. But all of this, he bought through credit and <laughs> never planned to pay anybody back. I mean, because, you know, why not? That's how you do it. Dude, he's just fucking Eventually, everybody. they'll stop asking for you to pay him back. So, fun fact, one company, if I remember correctly, it was like a steel company. Like, they were like, we want our fucking money. And he's like, <laughs> I'm not paying you guys. So, they are legally allowed to repo the steel. And... He's got a whole pull it out. Of the <laughs> I guess that was their plan. So he uh, gets a bigger insurance policy for uh, for what he has built thus far, and says you can legally repo it. But if you damage anything in this place, the insurance policy is like I guess over a million dollars or <laughs> something crazy. Then you will have to pay those damages. And so the steel company just said, like, they're like, fuck it, fine. Just keep the goddamn steel. I'm I mean, sorry. I would I just, let them do that. I was going to say, can, wait, 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 wait. That's genius. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking incredible. It's very, You're telling very me smart. that, like, that he, built a, he, built, fuck. he built a building with this company's steel, put an insurance claim on the stuff inside the building, so yeah. when the steel company comes Begging for, or not begging, but asking for their money. And they said, we are legally obligated to the steel that built this building. He's like, fucking do it. Because if you do, <laughs> I got early retirement, baby. Because <laughs> if you nudge my chandelier, you owe me a million dollars. Wow. Yeah, so they just let him keep it. They're like, fuck it, and they just awesome. took the loss. Somebody, anybody got a notepad? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so little, and it gets better. So little by little, he hires different people and companies to build parts of the castle and then fires them. Mm -hmm. Like he would say, like, they did something wrong. They're doing a bad job. Yada, yada, yada. Whatever excuse. For one, not to pay them. But for two, so no one but him knows the full layout of the murder castle. Smart. So Another smart move. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of the first things he does is hire a man to help him with the castle building. Uh, he hires a Mr. Wade Warner, who is literally just a furniture mover. Like, just... Guy like, that can move stuff. Like two guys in a truck? Yeah, pretty much. Shout out to two guys in a truck. Just just dumb and strong. Oh my God, if we could get sponsored by two guys in a truck, that'd be great. We could get like half a truck out of that. I do have <laughs> stuff that needs to be moved. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird thing to bring up when talking about murders. <laughs> I do gotta get out of town <laughs> quick. So, uh... You know, he lost his best friend, so he makes a new lost. best friend. He didn't lose lost. his best friend. Yeah. <laughs> he very much no, murdered he, his he, best friend. He misplaced it. <laughs> he, mis <laughs> <laughs> he misplaced his best friend, so, you know, he's, he's cruising for a new buddy. And uh, he befriends Wade Warner and convinces Wade to pretend to be the new inventor of a new glass-bending method. And, <laughs> and then... Bend, wait, bending glass? Yeah. I guess that's... I mean, like I guess if you when you were heating it and yeah. like producing it, right, right, right. Bend it. My my stupid brain went to my hands. Like oh, I got to bend glass. Just it doesn't break. It just <laughs> Look what I can do, guys. <laughs> just shards of glass. Yeah. In Look, hands. I invented this new way to bend glass. <laughs> so the, now the, you're dead. <laughs> uh, so he gets him to put in a glass furnace in the basement. They even start a fake company called uh, the Warner Glass Bending Company, and they use this. I was actually going to just make a joke of like, what they call it? Glass Bending Company? <laughs> uh, never mind. Yes, they did. <laughs> this guy's good. <laughs> You're thinking just like AJ Schultz. <laughs> Can we switch seats? <laughs> so they apparently just use this to get wealthy <gasps> investors to invest in the murder castle. Yeah, because like, oh, it sounds like a front. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tell you about my totally legit business. Glass bend Glass bend totally bend. legit. Right. I don't know why you're asking about it. Um, I'm sorry. Can I? I just reminded me of a genius, genius business name. <laughs> this guy has a liquor store, and it's called G Will Liquors. I hate you. G Will Liquors. Mm -hmm. I hate you. Take you know, those goddamn headphones off. <laughs> I love it. They're staying on. <laughs> Okay, so that one was just for Steven. Uh, he uh, 
<laughs> no, leave it in. I want him to know. <laughs> I want everyone to know. <laughs> he, he's got the murder castle. And in the murder castle, he has it set up. So not only is like there's the pharmacy, but he has restaurants, cafes, hotel, apartments, all in this whole murder castle and his own living space. As you can imagine, he has a lot of employees at this spot. One of my favorite things he did that <sighs> I don't want to give him points to say he's smart for this, but it is kind of funny. Fun fact, he makes all of his employees get life insurance policies and makes them all so that he's the beneficiary. <laughs> 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 this guy, he don't miss. He yeah. doesn't fucking miss, dude. So, whoops, fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> Dibs. So, at, at this point, he is living like a king. He's stupid rich and now has a murder castle that's making tons of fucking money. And this is when he gets into high gear. So Warner is living just fine, and one day he asked Warner to pay him some small amount of money, um, specifically in checks, though. So let's say he asked him, like, hey, can you, uh, can you pay me, like, $10, and, and specifically two checks. He's like, mm -hmm. just, like, $15 and uh, make it another 20 and another one. He doesn't think anything of it. Um, but later that day, he lowers Warner into the glass furnace, into the kiln, to show him something. And Holmes apparently locks Warner into the kiln, burns him alive, and then takes the checks and adds thousands. Mm -hmm. So he like just added zeros? Yeah, that's all. He just added zeros and checked them. <laughs> <laughs> then fucking cashed them, baby. <laughs> um, so this is the thing about um, my guy Triple H, right? So while, while I'm reading, I'm like, he reminds me of a guy, right? And I'm going to let you guys figure out who I'm talking to, right? Because when I read this article, it's a lot of stuff that says he's just crazy killer. He did all this stuff. But at the end of the article, it's like, maybe it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he wasn't that crazy. Maybe these murderers didn't happen. You know, it's a lot of, like like Jamie says, a lot of contradicting things. And because um, it was in an era where, you know, we weren't there. We didn't see it. There was no Twitter. You know, you weren't physically there. Kind of reminds me of the Bible. Okay, <laughs> and then I'm, and I'm not trying to, and, and, and I'm not trying to have, Oof. I'm not trying to have that conversation. But when I was reading, I was like, wow, because a lot of it is just hearsay. I mean, fair. a lot of it was, a lot of it is rumors. A lot of it is hearsay. A lot of it is, hey, there's this guy that we think is great, is is a a great figure. So we're going to like add stuff to his story. H.H. Mm -hmm. H. Holmes is very Christ-like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, okay. I, no, I don't. I do not agree. Oh, is that not what you were building up to? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just saying as far as as far as having this figure that people like that, that, <laughs> that that people, uh, you know, not necessarily look up to, but they they hold in a high regard uh -huh. and they add to his his aura yeah, by just fantasy. Yeah, by just coming yeah. up with just the most ridiculous stuff. Because a lot, because um, so it happens. A lot of people are saying things about him, but when, like, real journalists are, are going back and reaching, like, real researchers, like, that couldn't happen. Mm. That didn't happen. So, like, uh, where you were saying the, uh, so the mother who owned that uh, pharmacy, the wife who owned the pharmacy, right? Mm -hmm. He confessed, like, they're saying that maybe he killed her. She outlived him. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> she outlived him, according to my research. She, awesome. him. she was like, this guy's fucking crazy. I know he wants this yeah. shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> I do like the idea that he's just like a I'm really... I'm going to go to California. Like shitty dickhead boss. And they're like, I bet he kills people. <laughs> 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 Can you just tell that about a person? You know, like, eh, that guy probably kills people. Oh, yeah. 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 There's, a, like, like what, there's a certain look in their eye, you know? Yeah, like I work with a guy that I'm like, you smell the swimsuits at Target after mm. people have tried them on. This I, know, was, I just know it. This was I never crazy. This was that. during the uh, this was during the Good. the Nashville <laughs> the Nashville uh, Capitol riot, right? Uh, -huh. yeah. uh so the owners Wait, the what? The when they were at the uh they were at the state capitol. No, not the capitol, the uh freaking the courthouse. That wasn't a it wasn't like January sixth. Listen, man, I was working that night. I walked to take the trash out, I inhaled tear gas, okay? There was a commotion. Yeah, you cops gotta love it? to use tear gas on people. Yeah, okay, I breathe it in. It sucked, but that's not the point of the story. <laughs> uh, so the owners of 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 where I work, right, hired this guy to sort of like come and and protect the restaurant or okay. the or the business. Um, 
And the way this guy comes in, he comes in, he's a fully strapped. He's got an, he's got a freaking AR. He's got actually, I think he's got like two, he's got two ARs. He's got a couple of handguns and just the way that this guy like looked and presented himself. And you could just see that sort of like stare. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, no, no. This guy just hasn't, this guy hasn't killed like a person. This guy's killed like multiple people and like probably hired to do so. Yeah. Like, like th- he was like, yeah, man, like back in the day, they called me the wolf. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> All right. That guy. <laughs> right. All right. I'm sold. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. might be full of shit. Uh, no. I mean, he might have probably killed some people, but just to be like, this yeah, guy showed, called me the this wolf. This guy showed up strapped wearing a paperboy cap. No, this guy, this guy definitely kills people mm-hmm. for money. Yeah. Cool nickname, though. <laughs> the fucking wolf. <laughs> I had a girlfriend whose dad name was Bear. Didn't was not interested in meeting him. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. That's his like legal name or his nickname, Bear. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. I was making a joke about it. I was like, yeah, it'd be something funny. Your dad name was Bear. So like, how did you know that? I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, I actually have a friend named Bear. He's a musician. But is he black? No. Nice okay, white. not he's, him. He's he's white and he's a great country singer. Uh that one sounds more scary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you only call black people bear if they're huge as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I like that laugh. <laughs> it's a big thing you gotta earn. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So, like Jamie said, uh, you moved to Chicago. So this is what I'm. S- Can I hold this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like I'm saying, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So he goes to Chicago. He works at the bookstore, like Jamie said. You mind? I'm going to have to bring no, go ahead, go Yeah, go okay. Go so uh, he works at the uh, drugstore, like with the wife. They're actually a fellow graduate of Michigan. And um, so there was a rumor, like I said, that he poisoned them and murdered them and took over the business. But my research said uh, they both were still alive when home was executed in Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of like conflicted about a lot of the stuff where I'm like, oh, he was he was a great guy. Not great, but a great. <laughs> he was great at what he did. Yeah. Like capital G. Yeah. He yeah, was yeah. great at what he did. Um, so he goes to Chicago. Another thing about Chicago at the time, like we said, like we established, it's easy to get away with things. Laws aren't are crazy as they are as they are today. You know, you can scam and do all that type of stuff. I, um, I think you could still kill somebody in Chicago today. Actually, do you know what the clearance rate is for <laughs> mm. uh, murders? <laughs> yeah, you know, and I thought about that as well. I was like, the crime rate in Chicago is still high, but it's not. They're not digging up bodies. No, I, well, no, I think they're just finding the bodies. I was like, gonna say they're not, they're not digging, digging them up. But I think less I heard uh, the clearance rate for Chicago murders is 25%. That's not that much lower than the national average. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, what? there's not a very... Cops are not good at their jobs. What? Yeah, the actual... Like, <laughs> like the national murder rate for like solve rate is not as high as you think it is. Yeah. Is it really? I thought... It's pretty low. Damn. And you know the other thing about it, when people get caught, you'd be surprised at the dumb shit they did to get caught. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you yeah. dropped your cell phone, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's not always like incredible police work that brings them to. Sometimes it's just like, the guy's got a taillight out. I guess I'll pull him over. That's a lot of bodies in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sir, is this your blood? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. What's, what's the right what's the, What do you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like Jamie says, um, from what I'm reading, as a straight man, I'm willing to confess that Holmes, he was a hot guy. Mm-hmm. Women loved him. He was very charming. He uh, was hot. No homo. Yeah, he was hot. <laughs> um, studies show that he was very charming. Uh, when I read it, I was like, uh, I, I know a lot of black charming guys who didn't get away with a lot of stuff either. <laughs> 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 Spicy. Hot take. Yes. Hot take. <laughs> 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 Free my dog. I can think of one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Might have been driving a Bronco, but he got away with it. Yeah, I, I was going to make OJ joke. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Bear. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where am I at? So, the castle. So, uh, so he builds this castle in the neighborhood of Chicago. And this on, I think you might have to put it down because I think we're getting too much movement from the mic. Sorry, yeah, guys. I was, I was wondering if maybe the, we can maybe just pull it out of the stand or something. Uh, oh, stand-up style. Yeah. I don't know how I would do that. Okay, yeah, hold on. Oh. 
Do you just want it taller? Do you want like a book or something? Like I can put it in my lap right here, I guess. You probably try stand up style, see if that's gonna give us a shitload of noise or not. Are we good? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, try it out. Okay. So uh while he lives with the whole things, right? He moves across the street to the um to build the castle. Uh like Jamie said, like a lot of stuff, we're going about to retouch on a lot of the yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, so he was very paranoid. So like Jamie said, he fired a lot of people that he was working with because in his mind, I don't want these people to know my plan. I'm afraid that they're going to see a lot of stuff I'm doing. So we're going to fire you. Um, the first floor was initially designed for retail spaces, including another drugstore with the upper floor designed to contain residential apartments. So uh, he marketed it as a hotel, but it was never really a hotel. Like people actually lived there. So you he's know. got like bit like businesses running. Yeah, out of this yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the people are living there. He does this. Um, he does this thing where he's very forgiving for people. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. Don't you don't don't have to pay. Just sign these papers over here for your life policy. <laughs> 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 and then these Dips. people, these people, they disappear out of town. Just so happen to be leaving their clothes behind. Don't 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 don't. Oh, and <laughs> he gets the gasp, whole, gasp, <laughs> and then he gets the whole plausible deniability thing of like, well, they weren't paying their rent, so I assume they just skipped out on on, mm-hmm. on yeah. the bill. You know, he's okay. very he's very good at what he did. God damn, very good. This guy. So um, he presented the idea. Another way he was able to uh, invest in his um, castle, there was this thing called. Give me a second. Murder. Colombian exposition. Okay. Go on. Okay. So during the Columbian Exposition, that's where uh, it was called like the World Fair. And that's where people were celebrating Christopher Columbus, another killer. But we don't have to go there. (laughs) No, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, another way he was able to get a lot of his victims, there were a lot of women who were attracted to the idea of Chicago at that time, especially with the World Fair. Hold up real quick. Okay. Just a quick little tidbit about Christopher Columbus that most people don't know. Christopher Columbus was so crazy that even his men were like, dude, pump the brakes. Because mm-hmm. he was like oh, yeah. raping so many people. And yeah, yeah they were like they actually put him in prison for a little bit. And then Didn't sent, they? Yeah. Yeah. And then like sent him back and they were like, don't let, don't let him come back here. And again, this is during a time where it's like, yeah, you can have slaves. Yeah, you can have sex with your slaves. Yada, yada. But apparently he was just going crazy. Yeah. yeah. And he has his own day still. That's, that's real fucking, genocidal piece of shit. Yeah, real genocidal piece of shit. Yeah. But he found America. No, he didn't. <laughs> Amerigo Vespucci found America beforehand without the, even leaving his goddamn room. Dude, and he, the Vikings before him. And yeah. then people right. lived here before either right. of those yeah. things. <laughs> That's still dry. Even as a kid, I was just like, how do you get credit for finding a place people live at? And dude, not even, he didn't even think he found a place. He was like, oh, this is India. Yeah. Dude, this shit's crazy. Right. We're Indians. India. We're not Indians. Indians. <laughs> this isn't India? No. I don't know what that is. Where's your fucking gold? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can go. Did he land in like Cuba? Like it was like it was Cuba, right? I don't know. He was landing in the Caribbean, right? Yeah. Right. But uh, one reason I don't know if it was specifically Cuba, but one reason why he was uh, so highly thought of was because he was able to traverse through the ocean mm-hmm. and land in the same region over and over again, right? Which is. Just very being a hard. sailor, but still, yeah, hard. Well, like most sailors I mean, back in the day, do, yeah, yeah, back in the day, like you have a sextant in a map, and you're just like, I got to get here, and I'm here. Yeah, but Fuck he, that. he was able to consistently do it, which was something um, pretty unheard of at the time. Yeah, genocidal piece of shit, but great sailor. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, could he swim. <laughs> Okay, we're good. So, <laughs> so like I said, the uh, so the Colombian Exposition. So a lot of women were drawn to this area because where they were from, resources were limited. There weren't a lot of jobs. There weren't a lot of men. Here you have this guy, and at this time he has the castle open. It's like, hey, I have this great place for you. You can stay here. You can work. We can even fuck. Cause like I said, he was a very charming guy. Which he was married, but wife doesn't really know. This guy was smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's putting out ads like he's doing it in broad daylight and these women will come they will go missing simple as that they will come come and they will go missing nice so while we're out here smashing and dashing he's smashing and slashing no 
put it on a shirt. <laughs> I wrote, that. I wrote that. I wrote that. <laughs> I wrote that. Smashing and sure. I wrote that. So, uh, so the remarkable thing about the uh, the Castle, the Chicago Tribune, uh, they wrote, "Oh, what a queer house it was." This is back in 1937, so the Which word was strange. a little True. different. Yeah. Hang on, yeah. <laughs> he Gay did have a diary, happy. and I'm hoping that like he's like writing the diary like. Dog, I did it again. <laughs> smashing and slashing. You know how I do. <laughs> I smashed and slashed the fuck out of her. I, I still like the old, yeah, you can come here, work here, and uh, we can fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and you die. Um, they say, oh, what a queer house it was. <laughs> In all America, there was none other like it. It's chimney stuck out where chimneys should never stick out. Its stairways ended nowhere in particular. Winding passages brought the uninitiated with a frightful jerk back to where they had started from. There were rooms that had no doors. There were doors that had no rooms. A mysterious house it was indeed. A crooked house. A reflex of the builder's own distorted mind. In that house occurred darkness and eerie deeds. Mm. Ooh, damn, that's, spooky. That's a pretty good little, uh, good. little snippet. But then there's people who think it doesn't even exist. I mean, not, it, as far as what happened, because like I said, tenants lived there. People work there. Mm -hmm. How much killing are you doing? I believe that he was doing a lot, but I'm saying as far as like when researchers go back, they're like, could yeah. you really be? Yeah, yeah. Doing Somebody has to notice right, something. Right. Yeah, have y'all managed to find like a decent head count? Well, uh, according, so what happened was later in the story, Mr. Uh, <laughs> hurry up over here. <laughs> 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 so um, while he did an interview while he was arrested, he confessed to over like t 200 kills. Whoa. But he's Whoa. only, they, on, they only say maybe 11. Maybe. Oh. At best nine. That's what they're saying. Really? He, conf he confessed to more, but then he even, the crazy thing about him, he confessed to killing people that were still alive at the time. Interesting. But, but there are still other historians who are like, he said 200, but we think it's more. Yeah. But again, there's not a lot of evidence to say that there were more or that there were 200. So it, it's just, it's, just it's, yeah. it's what you believe. That's why it keeps mm -hmm. bringing me back to the book. If you believe, you believe. It's wild. <laughs> That's freaking wild. Especially, it's, it's like, what was that? We were talking about somebody recently. This is maybe down in Brazil. Like the kid, yeah, that, uh, Pedro, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Like, oh, and, the guy, the fake and, guy. and he like upped his numbers. It's it's almost like this weird ego notoriety thing. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, I killed like 200 people when in reality it was like nine. Yeah, it was like what were those those two drifter dudes, uh, Henry Lee Lucas and Cletus O'Toole? Basically, mm -hmm. yeah, they were like, oh yeah, we killed hundreds of people, and it's like you guys killed a lot of people, but. Yeah. You know. Right. You didn't kill like 300. I, yeah. I, think, you, I think you might be overcompensating there. I mean, something yeah. that thought process of like, I mean, I don't know what the number is, but there's there's the bound to be a number and it's probably not that high to where it's like, oh, you're in prison forever. Right. So it may as well just Yeah, at that point down. it's just like, sure, throw them on the pile. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Most I mean, cops will tend to be like, hey, if you confess to this unsolved murder that we're tired of following up yeah. on will give you like an extra vanilla pudding on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, like they'll just be it's, like, yeah, we'll fucking we'll take we'll put you in a slightly nicer prison if you confess to all these killings we're tired of not solving. Yeah. 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 And so um so the but the thing is he confessed to things, but it just there were a lot of contradicting stuff. Like I said, a lot of people are still alive. He sent people in directions and when they went there to actually look for bodies, they weren't there. Mm. So it's like, you're just talking shit, bro. <laughs> you might genuinely be a good guy. <laughs> and then, um, so a lot of people, a lot of legends also has it like that he had a torture room. But like I said, people worked there. People had access there. You know, when the police went, they found like, they found rooms and like, hey, maybe he tried it but like a couple times mm -hmm. and then he realized hey this isn't as easy as I thought and he just gave it up but to say this was the designated place I take people and I chop them up it wasn't happening mm -hmm. to my knowledge what do you think do you, do you think he was really do you think the number is as great 200 is, is, a, is a crazy number but like I said with everything contradicting itself from your research from my research the thing is like I try to think of it in normal life perspective. So think of like everything that you can achieve in a day. I 
feel bogged down already. Like, I'm sure Grant can agree. Like, mm. just like the normal day-to-day life things already bog you down. Yeah. You add a job on top of that. You add running a business. Running a business is a lot of fucking work. Yeah, it is. Um, you have a wife. He had kids at the time. He had multiple wives. <laughs> he had multiple wives, yeah. multiple kids, and multiple mistresses. And multiple businesses, basically. And multiple scams that people, yeah. people were wanting their money. Like, yeah, like, and he's running, like, different, like, lawsuits at the time. Like, dude was fucking busy. Yeah. And then you're you also... Add killing every day to that? I mean, that's kind of crazy. Probably not every day. Well, right, sure. right. But even once a week. Where I mean, are you going to so, find yeah. the time? Like, I mean, but if you read these articles, they're making it seem like he like, was. Yeah, it makes yeah. it sound like this man doesn't sleep. He's yeah, that's what they're 24/7, saying. Twenty four seven. He's like, dude, I gotta, I gotta bang this girl tomorrow, and I gotta kill the other girl tomorrow. Yeah, oh, you gotta add that in. He's doing a lot of fucking. Yeah, like it, he he has a ton of mistresses. So like, I think he did kill people. Yeah, I for think sure. He killed a lot of people, but I don't think it's two hundred. Like, I think anytime anyone was just like. Uh, you know what? Chicago's not for me. It's too much hustle and bustle. I'm just going to move back to New Hampshire or whatever. And he's just like, yeah, I killed her. <laughs> yeah. But th- that's my take because I, I, I don't know. I imagine it's just too, like. So you want to give him like a solid like 30 maybe? I don't know, man. I'm just thinking of like my own life. Like I'm uh, like, I get bogged down. Like I'm like, you know, with like, the writing and the podcast and, you know, work, family, I mean, because he wasn't just working the job. He was the job. Like, this was his business. Yeah. yeah. And how many years did this place stand? Like, from the time that it was, like, functionally built, like, built enough to do uh, stuff in, and then until when he got executed? You know, I didn't do the math, but Probably, at the end, I mean, a yeah. couple decades, right? I no, think no, it's it didn't, la- it didn't it's last. Like a decade. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah because, yeah. Uh, well, he left Chicago in 1894. Oh, okay. And when he moved to Chicago. Like, 1888, I think. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't oh, that okay. long. That's, yeah. yeah, it wasn't that so long. So it's like what, 11 years maybe? Wow. 10, 11, something yeah. like that. I, I didn't do the math, but I gave yeah. I gave you the not dates. The math guy. Hey, Steve, yeah. did you do the math on that? I gave the dates. <laughs> 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 you got to go to another department. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing was there were actual missing women in Chicago at the time. His target women. He put the ad in the newspaper for women. So a lot of this stuff can be true. That's the scary part about it. Mm-hmm. It can be. But uh, so, um, like I said, in 1893, Chicago became a hot spot for the women. They were looking for work, potential uh, spouse. Um, this is lady. She came there. She was attracted to homes after taking a job in the castle. That's what they called it. That is fucking cool, though. Like, that's a nice pickup line. Yeah. I live in the castle. castle. I live in the castle. (laughs) Does your husband live in the castle? That's what I'm thinking here. Is like, how do you do that without all the murder? Like, you you got this castle that you run a shit ton of businesses from. Like, you get people from all over the world to come work for you in this in this freaking castle. Am I Walt Disney over here? (laughs) Well, he was. He was. He was extremely charming. This is murder Walt Disney we're talking about here. I mean, they say he's charming, but it's also like he's just a rich white guy with a lot of resources. How hard could it be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of does the work for you. I mean, but if you look at his murder with um, Cock, all it took was a drink. I mean, he's not like beating these people upside the head. Laycock. (laughs) <laughs> Laycock He's not beating Put some respect on him <laughs> <laughs> He's not beating people Upside the head He's You know He's He has different True. methods You and know Plus he's a He's a, a doctor You know so yeah. Like you said Like he's it, got access to medicine He yeah. has a pharmacy Yeah And a lot of research Shows that he was still doing Well allegedly Still doing the scam With the universities Giving the bodies To the universities A lot of people say That that scam Was still going on Even though Contradicting I also researched That a lot of universities Are saying We don't know this guy of course, hmm. they would probably say that. Right. Yeah, we, we, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's but that's what I'm saying. That's the crazy part, right? Yeah. We, we, what do you mean we accepted uh, dead bodies from these guys? <laughs> I don't fucking know. All of our bodies are ethically sourced, my good sir. <laughs> <laughs> but on the flip side, I will say one thing that to me it either has to be a full ego thing or it doesn't make any sense that he's selling these bodies to um, to the schools and whatnot. It takes a lot of work. To sell the bodies to the school. Yeah. Um, and it was even said that he would sell like full on skeletons, which would mean that like you'd have to like dissolve kill the sp- them. Yeah, dissolve yeah. all the yeah, tissue. Yeah. yeah, that's what it said. He was dissecting them and everything. But 
think of the again it goes back to time yeah. how much yeah. time does this man have yeah. like like you're going to wake up run your business somebody has to notice girl, you're gone like burning a whole body down yeah. putting the skeleton together taking it to the taking it to the school and the weirdest part is again he is making money and the schools are only paying I if I remember correctly, like the full skeleton, I think it only uh, got him like three hundred dollars, which is still at that a lot time, of money. At it's that a time. lot of yeah. like at the time, that's still a lot yeah. of money. Right. But like, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, and I imagine he's got better things to do. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of things like that. We're like, huh? And he did a lot of this within just not a lot of time. Yeah, a couple just years. Just a few years. Yeah, a couple years. Yeah. So that's why I say it reminds me of another guy. Who I believe in. I believe in the other guy wholeheartedly. Uh, which guy are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some some black guy. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so once things got a little hot for him, right? Uh, Chicago, like I said, missing women. He was into scams, doing a lot of the scamming still. So he ends up leaving Chicago. According to this, he left 1894. Um, he started getting pressed by insurance companies. He was in one situation, and this is why uh, we say Chicago's uh, at the time, it was easy to get away with crimes, right? So the insurance companies, they take he's uh, arrested. The insurance companies have him at the uh, police station, and they're like, like, yo, like you, I got to get my money. And he's, like I say, he's a charming guy. He's charming his way out of it. So what they end up doing is they end up leaving him by himself while they go out to discuss what they're going to do with it. And guess what he does? <laughs> <laughs> he just eases on out of it. <laughs> while you guys are dealing with this, I'm just going <laughs> to... So um, shortly after, he was arrested for the first time for uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, when he bailed out. After that, he made plans to build another murder castle in Fort Worth, Texas. But that didn't—he didn't really do anything there with that. Damn, yeah. Fort Worth but he is thought a great place for a murder castle. <laughs> <laughs> You're but right, he, though. And the one that the, the one that did him meant another buddy, Benjamin. Have you read about Benjamin? What's, what's his last name? Is it Paisel? Paisel. Yeah, Paisel. I'm happy you said that. Um, Benjamin Paisel. That's his friend. They had this plan. We're going to say, hey, we're going to uh, come up with this insurance policy. We're going to uh, fake fake like you died. And we're going to put this ins- insurance policy. Well, what, apparently what happened, Benjamin owed him a favor. So he did it because he owed him a favor, which <laughs> you owe me five dollars, fake your death. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta be an easier way. Can I just help you move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta fake your death. <laughs> yeah. For the record, if you know like a person who's like scamming left and right and you know, possibly murdering people on the side, don't and be they, their friend. Yeah, they offer to get you in on it. Just say no. Walk yeah. away. Can mm-hmm. can I tell a bit of a side story about of somebody that I know that was doing scams? This killing is, people? Not killing people, oh. but this was this was nuts. So I, I mean, obviously you can't say really any names, uh, but so me and, and and James, we knew this we knew this guy, and he was he told us that he was a trust fund kid, right? And so he would take us out to these places. We went to uh, we went to a bar. Rob Gronkowski showed up. We had a lot of crazy times with this guy. Only to one day, never hear from the guy again. And then all of a sudden, we're at our favorite bar, and we're sitting having a couple of drinks. We just happened, just happened to look up at the freaking TV. On the news is this guy that we know who's getting in trouble for an international uh, credit card fraud. Apparently, he was doing that thing where he he puts the fake... uh, Whatever's on the like, pad thing. Yeah, yeah, like on ATMs and stuff. And so when people would scan their cards, they would get their information and then he would steal money from their accounts, knowing that the bank would pay them back. And when he got when he got arrested, he was quoted saying, Well, you know, it's really a, a, a harmless crime <laughs> because the bank's gonna pay him back anyway. <laughs> Could have killed him. Yeah, he could have killed him and taken their stuff. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> right. There are worse things he could have done, but I don't, I don't know what reminded me of, of, of that guy, but like, just uh, I think all this talk about fraud uh, sort of reminded puts me it on of this. The brain. Guy. Yeah, for sure. So, and while this is a true crime podcast, you know, there's some true crime for you. Shout out to that guy. <laughs> you know who you are, you fucking asshole. <laughs> so the, uh, the insurance scam was for $10,000. 
which back then was a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, but what happens is, our guy being our guy, he kills him. Like, no, nah, we're not going to fake this. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna take your real body. So he kills he kills his friend. Uh, uh, he kills his friend, and uh, what he ends up doing, he uh, his family knows about it. Benjamin's family knows that this is happening. So in their mind, daddy is still alive, which is fucked up. Mm-hmm. Daddy husband is still alive. So uh, Triple H, he's able to play with the wives. He's um, he's like, hey, your husband is fine in London. He even managed to get three out of five of their kids to travel with him, which is the guy was charming. Damn, he was charming. He ended silver up silver tongue motherfucker. Yeah, that's yeah. a hard sell. Yeah, he ends up he ends up taking though. three of their kids out of five. The mom, so he's traveling. So he's traveling. Jesus Christ, you take he, three he tells, fucking kids. He tells She's them. Got five of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can spare three. I'm from a, <laughs> Stop being I, greedy. <laughs> there were five of us growing up, and trust me, I could have lost three of my siblings, and we would have made it. If I had the <laughs> tongue, just, <laughs> no, if I had the tongue to finagle three kids, nice. you think I'd be doing murders? Nah, <laughs> I'd be doing something way different. I won't tell you what it is. Once again, continue phrasing. Yeah. yeah. Carlton, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they convinced the uh so at the time they go on the road. They're pretending, you know, he tells them, Hey, let's go, let's go check out your dad. Let's see how he's doing, okay? I'll take you to him. I know where he's at. And uh he has three parties traveling with him. The uh Benjamin's wife is on one route. He's traveling with the kids, and his wife at the time is also going there. This guy's he he he's pretty fancy. So uh what he ends up doing is kills the kids. <gasps> Holy shit. Yeah. Of course he does. Are you laughing at that? Bro? A little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because every time this guy it's gets ridiculous. separated from another group and he's just alone with someone, it's like, and then he killed him. Yeah. Like, he yeah. just can't stop. Well, this is the one we know for sure happened. We, yeah. we know yeah. he yeah. did. We know for sure. Yeah. This is the one that did it for him. Mm. This is the end of his story. This is act three of the movie. Mm-hmm. We're done after this, you know. So um, <laughs> so he uh, murders three kids. He puts two of the young girls in the trunk of his car and end up gassing them. God. The body ended up being drugged, chopped to pieces, and burned. The bodies of the girls were eventually found in a grave in Toronto. Brutal. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And uh, one of the most remarkable facts is that he uh, he was only convicted of one murder, that of Benjamin. But like I said, suspected for over two hundred. Fuck. So later, authorities found teeth and pieces of bones at Howard's uh, home in Indianapolis. I had to say it slow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what gave him away, right? He w- he had a, a roommate, well, not a roommate, a cellmate, right? Had a cellmate named Marion Hedgepeth. He asked him, "Hey, I need help. I have this plan that I'm trying to do with this insurance policy. I need a lawyer." Say, hey, I can get you a lawyer. It's going to cost you. Our guy being our guy, he doesn't pay uh, his cellmate. (laughs) So the cellmate goes to the police like, boy, do I have a story for you. (laughs) (laughs) If I remember correctly, it wasn't even a lot of money. Wasn't it like, I think he asked him for like $50. Something like that, $50 yeah. $50 for a lawyer after you've won, after you've got how much? In this economy? <laughs> <laughs> like, the guy is most likely a millionaire, and you know, comparatively to what, you know, inflation and whatnot. Right, right, right. He, he's loaded, and this guy's just like, yeah, I can help you out. I know a good guy. Just throw me 50 bones real quick. Well, according, according to this, um, according to this, while in prison, Howard, uh, told Hedgepeth that he had devised a scheme for a swindling insurance company of $10,000. And he promised Hedgepeth that if he would recommend him a lawyer suitable for such an enterprise, he should have $500 promised to him. Oh, five, that's what it was, 500 Yeah. It's a little... Yeah, I'll snitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cut, you short me $500? Your ass is grass, bro. <laughs> Especially sure. in this economy. <laughs> Don't let that joke die. Just keep saying it. <laughs> hey, when in doubt, double down. So, um, <laughs> when in doubt, don't it's doubt. tattooed across my chest. <laughs> so, uh, while I said he moved to Texas a while back, while he was in Texas, he bought a, he bought some horses, but he bought it with forged documents. God, this guy. <laughs> in Texas, of all so, places. Yeah, so he had a, he had a, uh, so police were looking for him for that. So while our guy Hedge, while our guy Marion, right, he snitched on him. The police was like, hey, we need to be able to bring this guy in for something. So they bring him in for the horses. Okay. 
He's scared to go down for the horses. I mean, because you know, different city has different crimes, right? So now they're asking, they're asking him questions like, "Hey, no, I, I told him all I was going to do was come up with the scheme. I didn't tell him. I didn't actually go through with it." Like, no, <laughs> you're bullshitting. We have experts. Let's cross examine. So they, what they do, they uh, Holmes nearly got away with it, but then the inspector remembered that when the body was first discovered, it was in full rigor mortis, meaning the person had died recently. So the inspector asked what techniques Holmes had learned to stiff in the body after rigor mortis had be, uh, been broken. Holmes had, Holmes had no answer and the game was up. Mm. Man. Mm. So, if I remember correctly, one of the main reasons why he, he got popped in the end was they were looking uh, into uh, the, the kids that were missing. And apparently... One of the insurance fraud inspectors was trying to find more evidence and then came across, uh, like, in his diary and letters uh, from the kids. Uh, and that he was supposed to send to the kids, but he never did. Where he, like, openly was like, we're going to do this, we're going to uh. do that. And, yeah, the he basically incriminated himself. If you would have just mm. burned those letters, but he liked keeping a log, quote unquote, of, of things he did. But we don't know if any of it is true. Yeah. So he didn't really keep mementos so much like other serial killers, but more like kept his like memories. And it goes it goes back to what we were speaking about with uh, all it takes is that one dumb mistake to get caught. Yeah. 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 He didn't get caught because of you know he left a bone Let behind. Be a it was, to the rest. Of well, the you know, like what well, you know what you said. Was yeah, the letters not giving them tips? So uh, a lot of things that led to the legend so of um, H. H. Holmes was uh, he was paid seventy five hundred dollars, which was estimated to be around two hundred fifteen thousand dollars today, to tell his story. And that's when he started like adding ah. an extra sauce to like what was happening. Yeah, more so, dipping. Yeah, yeah. He gave a, a number of contradictory uh, accounts. Um, he ultimately discredited himself. Um, he, like I said, he confessed to killing people that were, you know, that were alive already, that was still alive, but, you know. So uh, he ended up dying. He uh, was hung in Philadelphia. And uh, I read where initially he uh, his neck didn't snap. Initially, his neck didn't snap. So he was just sitting there, like, just patiently dying. Yeah. And they, yeah, and they, said, um, they said leading up to his death, he was very chilled, very relaxed, showed no remorse. So no sadness. God, that's so much scarier to just have someone yeah. hanging there, like slowly suffocating, just looking at you, like totally chill. Ah, right. ah close your eyes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not blinking, just staring at you. Just <laughs> erection rising. <laughs> yeah. and the crazy part, he died. He ended up dying five days before his uh, 35th birthday. Fun fact. This guy wasn't even old. I know. Yeah. I've been what picturing like a 70 year old. Like. I can accomplish a lot by 35. I still have time. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, he had a weird request because of his past. He had this request that he wanted to be buried in concrete. Ask me why. Why? why? So people wouldn't steal his corpse. Mm. You know what? Wow. Fair. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want people to like uh, grave. He's like, I know the game, baby. <laughs> and he can't be he stealing. Didn't want to be body. dissected <laughs> and then like be studied or anything. So he was like, bury me in concrete. And they're like, what? This piece like, yeah. of shit went around stealing dead bodies and cutting into them. And he's like, not for me. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna get God. <laughs> I'm gonna get other people, but I ain't gonna get God. Yeah, that's you're not crazy. gonna do me to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I'm sorry. This this whole story is just incredible. Like, on one hand, it's like wow, the on business the other, acumen. On the other hand, it's just whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well put. <laughs> Random fact Like I said A lot of people They add to this whole uh, Mystique of him There was a rumor Going out that He never actually died That he escaped And that he is actually Jack the Ripper uh, That's yeah, just yeah. a theory That's a theory That's I out there that. yeah, yeah. But okay. They did They dug his body up Smashing and slashing They, they researched it Like nah This is him <laughs> They said his mustache Was still intact I nice. know him. Yeah and then they nice. buried him again. Shout out to the concrete <laughs> companies out there. Yeah, yeah. Perfectly preserved. Still got his mustache. <laughs> Sponsor us, concrete companies. <laughs> like some concrete company's like, that's how good our concrete is. 
<laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm like, I'm over here like, maybe, maybe I want to be buried in concrete. <laughs> well, some of the myths, though, uh, like I said, there was a myth that he sold his victims' skeletons to medical schools. Uh, what I, you know, something that I read was uh, there was no... Uh, that a lot of the schools, they said, hey, this story is weak and it's flawed. Uh, somebody in 19, uh, 1895 came to the police and said that he bought bodies from homes at the castle. But it's like the stories that he told the police at that time was just contradicting, you know, his same stories. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so a lot of people wanted to add to this story. A lot of people wanted to be involved in this story. A lot of people wanted to be characters in whatever was happening. And in doing so, they just added a lot of flavor to the story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I heard H.H. Uh, H. Holmes uh, fucks a young Mrs. Capone and might have actually been Al Capone's dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I read and, that in a book. And, of course, like we established, none of the colleges, none of the colleges uh, uh, claimed he bought them bodies. And his relatives even told uh, the police, like, hey, this guy is a drinker and he lies. That's what his own family members said about him to the cops. That's just a drunk pathological liar. Yeah. Got it. There was also, uh, there's also a myth that he was the world's first serial killer, which is not true. There was actually a guy in Chicago named Thomas Neil Cream who was killing people in Chicago by poisoning them. He killed five people. So there were already serial killers out there. Uh, the number of murderers, they say around 200, but the actual known victims is around nine. Okay. He confessed to 27, but they said that that's exaggeration. Although what is fucked up, it seems like, what, uh, five of them were children, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Real quick. What was the the guy the, the first serial killer? Okay, his name was Thomas Neil Cream. Sorry, that just, it just reminds me of like a Tom what is Cream. with these last fucking Tom names? No, it just reminds right. me of like a Jay Z versus Nas kind of battle. It's just uh, like no, I'm I'm the best <laughs> one, and then like one just pumping full of well, lies. But like, tri- nah. Triple H is up there. Yeah, but, yeah. You got, <laughs> but you got Laycock, and then you got Cream. Tom what the Cream? fuck was going on in the 1800s? <laughs> right. Was another killer named Larry Peach? They don't all work. <laughs> Peaches and cream, baby. <laughs> they don't all work. So yeah, that's that's what happened. That's 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 what happened to Triple H. Dope. I just hope that Steven, could you just like put the first note of the wrestler Triple H? Anytime Carlton says Triple H, boom. <laughs> time to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> or use like a uh, boom, boom. similar enough but copyright safe mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, version of it too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you get sponsored so by yeah. the WWE. So I, I, oh my God, so be sick. just to that clarify, I don't think he was that smart. I think like he seems conniving and very good at what he does. He was which smart is for the time. Schemes and murder. Yeah, <laughs> he was smart for the time. I actually he was, think he was very smart. I just think a lot of things he did was uh, were exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's that's to get away with one murder. You can get away with one, one murder by mistake. More than two, you know what you're doing. Yeah, and it takes a lot. I mean, even I. I mean, it is a different time, but there's a lot of gruesome ways to murder somebody, right? Sure. To be able to do it and still like, you know, have a a slim chance of getting caught. Maybe I did it. Maybe I didn't. In an empire on top of all. Yeah. Well, hell, the, the whole steel scheme, that was genius. Yeah. yeah. That alone yeah. Yeah. qualifies him as at least, like, crafty. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. All right, okay. I'm, smart-ish. We'll Let's, crafty. Smart-ish. Yeah. I never would have crafty all day. Yeah. yeah. He, he knew something. Yeah. A question to the table. Do we think... Do you think he really enjoyed the killing? Or did he view it more so as just, like, a, a means to an end? I would say more of a means to an end, it yeah. seems like. It's because... I don't know. You, you hear you hear stories about serial killers, and they have a type. You know, he just seemed to do it because it was making him money. If I had to take a stab at it, I would. I think it was a routine, right? I, yeah. I just think yeah. it was part of his. I scam people. I kill, I kill people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the cowboy cannibal you you talked about last time. You yeah. know, and that it was like probably kind of like you were saying too. Is that like. Eventually, it's just like, hey, this is what I do. It works. Mm. You know, why so, fuck up a good yeah. system? Well, there's might... a lot of correlations. Sorry to interrupt, but no, there's no. a lot of correlations with Dr. Satan, too. That it, yeah, yeah I was about to say that, that yeah. yeah. Well, there's yeah. that, but also it also seems one of the earlier sort of examples of organized crime. He seemed, whether he's smart or not, he was organized. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. had he had his ducks in a row. Like I think he, he had an idea of what he was doing and what he was trying to accomplish. Got away with it for a while. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, it's not crazy to think that the beginnings of the Chicago Mafia were involved in this in some small way. Not to say that they were the ones killing all the people, but I mean, think about it. It's Chicago. There's a bunch of transients coming around. It's a huge city regardless of the time. You know mm. what I mean? It is probably a large economy relative well, to the rest the, of the when, country. When did the Chicago Mafia come into play? Well, I don't know, but that's, I mean... That's the question. But you think, I mean, there's always been organized crime as the, long as there's been crime. So, you true. know, he was probably... Other people in Chicago knew him. But when I think of mafia, I think well, of yeah, the 1920s. That, and this happened right. dec- This happened, uh, yeah. Like 30, 30, 30 years 30, 40 before. 40 years before, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, people definitely knew him in Chicago. I'm sure there yeah. were probably some other local business people who'd be like, hey, my man, Triple H, uh, I kind of got this gal at the hotel room, and it's a whole thing I don't want to get into, but I might have a body you can... You can well, that's because, like, yeah. also the other rumor, like I said, this whole idea that he's doing this at this uh, the castle... There's this, um, this, this, you kind of want to imagine him being like this Batman type of guy, just him alone by himself. Mm-hmm. But like, like, yeah. like we established, he was involved in other crimes. Police right. knew exactly where he was at. Right. Yeah. So people knew Triple H. Mm. I will. Okay. Let me, let me backpedal real quick. So I think prior to going to the insane asylum, I think he was unorganized. I think he made a lot of really dumb decisions made a really like a lot of quick decisions and I think they were ultimately very stupid mm-hmm. but it you know like the loony bin really turned him around yeah the loony bin somehow <laughs> really turned him around where he was just like you know what <laughs> You know, I got to get my life together. Yeah. But you, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get married. I'm trying to get all the bitches. I'm trying to get some money. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make things happen. Well, right you know, uh, something that I think is interesting. Also, um, there's things that happen to people that unfortunately changes their lives. You know, uh, and I'm not trying to go there, but somebody, a kid, getting touched, it can change that kid growing up. Yeah. And I wonder if that incident where he was, uh, where he was locked into that room with the corpse, I really think that messed his head up. Mm. I Probably, think that was yeah. a contributing factor. I, I wouldn't say that like was the only factor. I mean, Probably but a whole soup in there. But that's you know, that's there. traumatic for a kid. Yeah, sure. you know, I'm afraid of this dead body. And you just shoved me in a room with the dead body, and he just so happened to be really good with dead bodies. Do you have any uh, traumatic brain injuries that we know that's of? Not story. that I know of. No, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like that's how he became Batman. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. uh, did you read? I read something that he was actually afraid of him at first. Yeah, apparently, like, in it, but again, the the whole thing with the body and the skeleton and the school and everything, that is him. That comes from him and his diary. Yeah, so, of course you're going to give the best version. Yeah, yeah. So you can't like, trust anything serial killers say about themselves. You can't yeah. trust anything anybody says about themselves. Hey, come to that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to. You know, you, you. Hey, when I used to get on dating profiles, I'm six foot four. I have a six pack, <laughs> and I drive a Mercedes. I work out every day, baby. Six a.m. Come get this size ten. <laughs> and then by the time they're there, it's too late. You're in the spider way. You want? You want a drink? <laughs> Call back. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Well, that was a good one, guys. Yeah. I liked it. Um, what's a what's a question we can pose for the the listeners? How many people have you killed? Email us at don't email trash <laughs> at gmail.com. How many people have you killed? But how many people are you willing to tell? Like that, like that. You Every killed? everybody asks is a deep question. Can we take a turn asking a deep question or something? Like, uh, hang on, uh, is that is that okay? Are we we, we are, are not are not? No, I, I don't know. If my, I'm my question would that be deep like of a person. My my question would be like, pretty let's level. say you killed ten people. You're on death row. It's gonna happen no matter what. How many people are you gonna tell? Or how many? How many? Like when they ask you, how many people did you kill? What's your number? Mm. But I mm. actually killed ten. Yeah, you you killed ten. Let's say, like, you're being charged for three. You but kill ten people. Do they not know about the other ones? They don't know about the then other probably ones. Probably what I would do, this is just this is just me. If I if they knew about three that I had killed and I knew I had seven bodies, I would I would leverage that. I would Yeah, not, it depends on the time. Yeah. I would just be like, hey, listen, you know, you guys can execute me, whatever you want. But I got seven grieving families that would love <laughs> to know where their loved ones are. Closure, closure. Yeah. And if you want some closure. How about you uh, bring me a little extra piece of meatloaf? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> or whatever. I'm, most of my motivations are food-based. So. <laughs> yeah, pretty similar answer to you for me. Yeah. yeah. 
Also, just knowing me, the type of person I am, if I really do get caught doing something, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you got me. Well, that's where I'm at. <laughs> right. That's where I'm at. If so I, at that if point, I, I just had, be like, yeah, I it was 10. <laughs> 10 kills that I knew of, and they were like, like, hey, we're pegging you for this, like, two, three people murders. I'd be like, yeah, man, I got 10. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I would, I don't, I don't know if I would fluff my number. Yeah, I don't think I would. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't fluff my number. I would keep the seven, like, in the back pocket, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? But I wouldn't be like, oh, I killed 15. Ten's still pretty impressive. Ten solid. Ten, if you get ten kills and nobody knows about them, like, like, you you did you did good. You did a good yeah. You did good. You you did your job correctly. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I killed 200 people. Because, like, come on. Like, how many people you killed? Zero, bitch. I (laughs) killed ten. (laughs) Carlton, what's your number? True. I think I'm going the Triple H route and just over exaggerating. <laughs> 150. <laughs> I'm over exaggerating. How about mm. you? What about you, Jamie? I think I'd be like a dickhead about the whole thing because I'd be like, what's the biggest number that anyone else has killed? And they're like, I don't know, 20? I'm like, 25. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a guy in, uh, in uh, Illinois who killed 30. No, I meant 35. I meant 35, yeah. <laughs> I th- I think Did I say 20? <laughs> who can remember? They all blend together. Well, Genghis Khan and Adolf Hitler killed uh, millions. Oh, they, they did? Uh, I also killed one. Oh, I didn't know we were counting one, Hitler but, and Genghis Khan. <laughs> but really, when you one think about it, one. I killed one because they're really all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Just pulled Doctor Evil. <laughs> One billion people. It was like the, you killed an them. eighth of the population <laughs> right. of the eighth. planet Earth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that you're gonna stick to that story. Yes, yeah. I will. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna I do? Execute maybe, me again? If you said a, if you said one billion people, even though you killed ten, I think you probably wouldn't go to prison. But to that, back to that insane asylum to live the rest of your days, <laughs> and, well, and that's and you. that's how you and that's how you like kind of get away with it. You know, like ah, I'm fucking crazy. You know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 No. It depends on the time, because back then they were like, oh, you're crazy. Snap his neck. Yeah. Actually, yeah. like, uh, True. so in a couple of the past episodes, there's so many times where, like, they caught uh, a serial killer very early on and they went to an insane asylum. And the insane asylums are like, hey, he's not that crazy. Let yeah. him go. Oh, yeah. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you, like you can talk to people and like still make money and like pay bills and be. Yeah. A You're not jerking member? off in front of me right now. The system works. Yeah. It's He's cured. Together, well, my my He's mom. He's got his poop, guys. Let him out. My mom was a. Uh, my mom is a special ed teacher, right? And okay. different different people have different uh, needs and different um, illnesses, different mm-hmm. weaknesses. We are wired differently, and you would have, you have kids who have they will have a, a what's the word I'm looking for like a like a visual disability yeah. and you have people that's just freaking normal have conversations with you you know be in class you wouldn't even know until you see it and that's a lot of times that's how people are you you're sitting there you get a call your cousin robbie just no you know when these people yeah. when they get interviewed and they say no nah, he would never do that because from their experience jamie's a good guy yeah my experience you, you know you guys are good guys so if i'm ever on nashville news and i see you shot up you know say you had a you got an argument and you shot a guy i'm like nah, he would never do that and then i'm looking at the video on world star like that guy was a fucking gangster. <laughs> <laughs> you really did that. I will say, so, you know, when I when I was younger, I did a lot of nefarious things, and I have met uh, gang members and actually am friends with a guy who actually sold crack when he was much younger and was in a gang in Nashville. And I know he stabbed people. He's told me about that. I, mm-hmm. I would imagine he's also done other very dangerous things and might have even taken life at some point. But he's a great guy now. Sure. And because of that, that's why I don't play with people. You, you never, never know. You never know. That's true. You never know. That's, that's why fair. I don't play with people. Yeah. The you one guy the one part. guy I'm gonna look at and say, I'll fuck you up. Little do I know that's Jamie's homeboy who has five bodies. Right. <laughs> Hey, before we fight, do you know Jamie? (laughs) (laughs) I will say this. So, like, uh, and, like, out, you know, when you're out and about and, um, you know, just walking around, let's say you're at a gas station and you walk in, you see someone that's, like, let's say three, four feet behind you. 
I always hold a door. I mm-hmm. always say thank Same. you. Like hell yeah, it's it's a yeah. small thing. Just yeah. a little but, politeness. Oh yeah. But I do that not because I think like that's the polite thing to do. I'm like that guy might be a serial killer, mm-hmm. and I don't want to get on his fucking shit list. Right. Yeah. Because I have heard of stories, even in Nashville, even recently, where like they said like a guy did a drive by on somebody because like he got cut off in traffic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's that's the thing is like, and I. I I don't drive like an asshole, I don't think. But, like, sometimes, like, I do think twice before I, like, you know, edge someone out or, like, follow behind him. It's like, why is this fucking piece of shit going, like, 10 miles under mm-hmm. speed? Because it's like, you just don't know, man. It's not, it's not worth Especially it. around here. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, like, you know, the South is the South. But, like, you don't know who's got a gun. You don't know who's, like, just had a fucking bad day. Yeah, not, or, it's not even the South is the South. People are people. Yeah, people are people. You don't know who just, like, got into a huge argument with their wife mm-hmm. and is just like, you know what? I don't even fucking care anymore. I wish someone would test me. I wish so. And yeah. then you just become the right person in that in their mm-hmm. in their mental play about themselves being a victim. And then they fucking shoot you. Mm-hmm. I, I People think I'm, like, polite and, like, you know, like talking to people. But, like, I just fucking hedge my bets. <laughs> I'm really scared. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. Your kindness is self preservation. Yeah. yeah. That's how I walked into a gas station that was being robbed to use the bathroom and got out okay. Yeah. So I was just talking to this dude and I was just like, oh, hey, what's up, man? He was like, oh, hey, what's up? And then I like walked in and it was just because I was like, I was like very drunk and I just had to piss somewhere. So I was like, Sarah, you just go hang out and I'll just go like walk in. And like, I like went and pissed and I was like, that guy was blocking the door before he let me in. I was like, that's kind of weird. And I walked over, and the dude's just standing at the counter, like, kind of, like, got his hand in his pocket, like, pointing at the cashier. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up, man? And he was just like, oh, man, you just go on, get out, go on, get out of here. And I was like, cool, what's up? Thanks. Like, and then I just walked out, and then I was like, we're if, leaving. If, like, I'm the, if I'm the clerk, I'm like, if you don't call the fucking cops. We did. We did. <laughs> the next time I see you at this gas station, <laughs> you talking about a slim line between good and evil. <laughs> I will triple H your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but before we close out today's podcast, I do have a, a small story, true story to tell. Do we, have time? do we have time? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, real quick. I'll try to make this fast. This is, a again, true story. I'm going to change names uh, in case any, any people might know the same people. But I used to work at a bar years ago. This guy used to know, let's say his Peter. Name, <laughs> uh, let, let's let's call him Shoes. Mm-hmm. Shoes. Okay, fine. This guy, Peter Shoes, got it. Uh, Peter Shoes <laughs> used to uh, hook up with girls all the time, like every week, new girl. Mm-hmm. Peter Shoes also liked bigger women, and I was like, you know what? And he he was not shy about it. Yeah, yeah. Like he would bring him around, and then Get like down, he, he'd find a new big girl next week. What's your definition of big? Yeah, that's true. I need to know how big we're talking. Carlton size. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got some sweet titties though. Yeah, yeah. That's, got some <laughs> sweet, some, some yeah. sweet chocolate. Yeah, that's some, that's some thick bitch. Oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> uh, and how like everyone at the bar was like, Steve Shoes, player, player of the year. Not Peter shoes. He got a tie, but he pulling. <laughs> hey, I mean, pulling's pulling. <laughs> pulling's pulling. <laughs> wet is wet, baby. <laughs> I'm not gonna go. There. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Peter shoes is pulling, right? Peter shoes is about to um, move out of town. I'm, he has a, a going away party. I'm working that night. I'm exhausted. Um, but Peter Shoes also starts hooking up with one of my uh, friends at the time who also happens to be a bigger girl. Mm-hmm. And let's call her... Uh, I'm going to call her... Uh, pa, 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 cash Money. Okay. 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 So Shoes is putting it to Cash Money. Uh, shoes is putting it to Cash Money. And I found out that night but I didn't know for a fact that they were like, you know, bumping uglies. Um, but Cash one is like, yeah, what? like, you know, she comes to the bar and I had just gotten off work. So I'm exhausted. I'm just going to have a beer and go home. And she's like, uh, what are you doing tonight? It's like, I'm exhausted. I'm just going to have a beer and go home. What are you about to do? 
And she's like, oh, this guy I've been hooking up with on and off, um, he's having a going away party. And I'm like, oh. And I'm hiding my cards. Poker face. Yes, I have one, Joseph. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. So is it Peter Shoes? And she's like, oh, how did you know? It's like, because I know Peter Shoes. And she's like, you know Peter Shoes? Like, yeah, I know Peter Shoes. And she's like, oh, my God. Yeah, we've been hooking up, and it's been great. But he's been really into, like, some crazy stuff. And I was like, what, like anal or something? Like, <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no, I gotta, I, I have to tell someone this. I haven't told anybody. And Peter Shoes was apparently into hooking up with men off Craigslist. Specifically, he enjoyed blowing them while wearing a ski mask and having them blow their load onto the ski mask. And I'm like, it's oddly specific. Oddly specific. Yeah. So I was like, Suspiciously <laughs> specific, really. <laughs> shoes wouldn't do that. That that's, that's not shoes. And she then pulled you find out, a Craigslist. She at. pulled her phone out and showed me pictures. So she was there while it was happening. He would send, he would catch her up because she was, she was also oh. pretty freaky. And so he'd be like, check out what I've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that can't you be You think him. that's crazy. And yeah, she showed right. me. <laughs> Let me one up you. Yeah. She literally had a picture of him butt naked with the ski mask on. Hard. And I was like, I, you know, well, you know, it's, it'd be like if you saw your best friend naked, you're like, I know who that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I know how tall he is. I know how big he is. Like, that's him. And I was like, okay, but that's just him in a ski mask naked. Like, it can't, right. She could have come up with a story after having gotten the picture. And then she showed me. Two more pictures. One with you still don't believe me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to show another you. one. Yeah, with, I got yeah. receipts. Swipe, <laughs> swipe left, and there was a picture of shoes with ski mask full of blast, like just it's everywhere. Uh-huh. And I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> and then she swipes left again with just the ski mask, like it's just a picture of the ski mask, like only got like a bathroom table or whatever, mm-hmm. like uh-huh. on the top. More blast. More. More blast. And but you know, I know we have to go, but I'm upset with the woman. <laughs> you know? I shared an intimate I shared a very personal Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlton is one hundred percent right. Mm-hmm. I shared something with you. That was a vulnerable moment for shoes. Yeah. Because we're all into freaky shit. We all get we're weird. We're, yeah. we, we've all grabbed that lotion bottle and jacked off to some shit. We will not tell our friends. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But nonetheless, Shoes... I I really hope Shoes doesn't listen to this. But Shoes... Uh, <laughs> shoes doesn't know I know. But Shoes also... Uh, shoes sure the fuck knows now. He, How many people get bl- blow up for dudes in a ski seriously. mask and let them do it all over? The- I never said your name, dude. <laughs> shoes shoes is married. Shoes has a, has a kid. Why are you blowing up Shoes' spot? Man? I'm just saying, like, like shoes you never know. My my point being, full circle. You never, you know, never know somebody. Oh, you okay. never know. You never know. And I'm not even saying what Shoes did is wrong. It has nothing to do with that. It's not, it's it's not wrong. It's not immoral. It's just. I, I I tell that story to people because I want people to know you never really know somebody. You never really know the person next to you and their deepest, darkest fantasies and if they're acting them out on them or not. Right. Whether that be a sexual fantasy that hurts nobody and there are no victims or, in this case, someone who definitely murders people and mm-hmm. has victims. Mm-hmm. It's facts about people. You just don't know until you know. You just don't know until you know, baby. Yeah. And then when you know... Sometimes it's too late. That's a very fucking hard line to draw there, bud. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, If if listeners, if you have any great stories you want to share with us. Yeah, you got sexual fantasies that you don't want anybody to know about. We don't know about you. you Have you ever found something? Have you ever found something out about a buddy? Something crazy. Something crazy. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, or yeah. if you mm. do have something that either you are down with or you found out about someone, email it to us at don't email trashville at gmail.com. And if you want, we won't even we won't use your names. We won't use names. Scouts oh, honor. I would I would say space. don't use your names. 
that yeah. E- email, us, yeah. email us email yeah. us as uh, shoes. <laughs> yeah, email yeah. us the shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The shoes here. I want to hear a Peter shoes story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Shoes. If you're listening, you didn't that do anything fantastic. wrong. You did nothing wrong, bro. You you lived Get out. Get down, man. You were yeah. single and you did your catch thing. that That's nut. Fine. Yeah, catch that. Catch I also that had nut. a great idea. As since we're uh, <laughs> since we're doing, you want to wear whole... a ski mask and get busted on? No, nah, I got this a lot is something of nut. I had earlier in the podcast. When we were talking about like lower in the bar. I think it'd be fun if we asked the listeners who was the lowest of the podcast and we can crown a champion every once in a while. It's every like, once in oh, a while. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. The yeah. winner is also the loser. So Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We can make a shame crown. We can make a shame <laughs> crown. <laughs> and then we can, uh, to, oh, okay. Rate who you thought was uh, lowest bar, hashtag bar lower than limbo or whatever. We can think of I don't know hashtag. how hashtags. Work. I don't know how hashtags. Work. I don't know if anyone's still using hashtags. But the point is, tell us who you think is the worst. We'll make a shame crown. We'll crown. We'll have a little ceremony. We'll take pics for the for the socials and yeah. get it up. I like that. Yep. Cool. Well, yeah. thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, thanks for listening. Well, thanks Peace. for sticking this far into it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joseph saying good night. This is Jamie saying good night. This is uh, Austin saying good tomorrow. This is Carlton saying, see you later. Grant, bye. (laughs) (laughs) And the book of mysteries closes on our heroes. Until next time, my fellow wanderer, my kindred spirit of Gotham City. We had some laughs, some scares, and maybe learned something along the way. Think of us for your next podcast listening pleasure. Think of us when you go to sleep and the house settles and you close your eyes. And you feel something there. <laughs> if you like what you hear, subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Trashville underscore USA. And if there's a true crime story you want us to cover, email us at don't email Trashville at gmail.com. You bunch of cunts.